people only see as much of Shams or as much as uh, as much of Rumi as they have seen themselves. What got me into it, I was very young. I think I must have been about eight years old. My cousin's husband, he played the sitar in front of me. And I was blown away. I'm like, <laughs> you go towards the music, the spiritual music, it, it, it can really drown you. Hmm. You know, it's hmm. very deep. It's like, yeah. it's like a whirlpool you go inside. Of all these people, my grandfather, he stands out amongst mm. everybody else. Waking up every day at four, you know, meditating for an hour in darkness. Say. And then reading the Quran and then reading the Masnavi. So a tremendous and very silent guy, very introvert. Uh, and so he used to like give me like the older students papers to, you know, mark. Say. Like, you know, you mark these papers, I don't have time. <laughs> wow. So I was a very good student. And again, I was studying because I wanted to know the truth. You know, uh, like maybe I find it here, maybe I find it there. Maybe they all add up at some point mm. and I come to to a conclusion. Yeah, so I was focused on studies and then I had to start work at the same time. And then again, there came a point where um, I couldn't uh, do all of this, you know. So then I had to choose work over studies and uh, focus on the business. Yeah, I'm not sure I should if I should say these things on TV, but yeah, so like people would come to me and say stuff that were like answers to the question, some question I would have. It was not like they, you know, it was a random, it was the universe talking to me. I was in a wheelchair for months and I was on crutches for months and then at the same time I had to run the business. So yeah, there came points where I would just stare into the mirror. Man, I know it's within you, but tell me, heck yeah. <laughs> Today we have a very, very special guest, someone who I met, I think, I uh, think, two years ago, and uh, I was blown away with, the, with his company, a uh, very untraditional uh, sort of person uh, in terms of, you know, just this field of work, mein, uh, I am working and, and he's working and the whole background, I've learned like a lot. So. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll try to dig deep into the whole sort of uh, world of uh, Moise and, and see uh, what we can um, get the knowledge out and everything. Thank you for coming Moise. Thank you for inviting badi, me. Badi mushkil se hai. I was just <laughs> pushing you. Aajain, aajain, aajain. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's, it's, it's really good to Thank have you. you. I think uh, I, I literally like I, I don't have any any sort of format or anything I just wanted to know who you are like I don't know if you remember when I came to your house and yes. we just sat for like <laughs> mm -hmm. se baje se leke, yeah. raat ke do, baje tak, and that was our first meeting yes, it was. so I just wanted to sort of start with uh, if you can talk a little bit about your upbringing mm. uh, what was your childhood and especially uh, your sort of family Mm. Uh, you know, how was the What I can remember is it was a very spiritual house to begin with. Um, out of all these people, my grandfather, he stands out amongst mm. everybody else. Perhaps he had the most influence on me. Um, waking up every day at four, you know, meditating for an hour in darkness. Say. And then reading the Quran and then reading the Masnavi. So a tremendous and very silent guy, very introvert. Uh, uh, so yeah, the childhood has been. A bit but but was he like very ustra? Was uh, he like or like what was his? No, he background? was an average man. Say. Yeah, an average man, but a very spiritual person. I hmm. uh, would press, practice it uh, all the time. That's all I remember from him. Say. Yeah. And and what was his sort of profession? Um, he worked in an office. Okay, yeah. so he was like a very, very normal, common, very common say, man. Yeah. Say. So he yeah. was not into this whole, just maybe Archkel meditation or no, no, yeah. not at all, not at all. It say. was a very, a very common man, but um, that's all he lived for. Say, and yeah. and at what time, at what age did he sort of pass away? Uh, I just I'm very bad with dates, but uh, it's probably been about twenty years maybe now. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. and other than that, like how was the household? I met your mother as well, yes, and she yes. she still feels like a, like your friend as well, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just like yeah, I think yeah we have a very candid uh, relationship at home. Um, it's full democracy. If there's any mm -hmm. democracy in our house, um, also we've been into sports. My uncles, you know, uh, so they've been into sports. So 
sports, exercise, human anatomy. Uh, my mom uh, is a manual therapist, the physical therapist. And and what are your sort of early childhood memories of music and you know like how was the house looks like so um i am the only person probably in my entire khandan who went into music we have nobody Sorry. in our uh, immediate uh, family who uh, was into music um what got me into it i was very young i think i must have been about eight years old my cousin's husband he played the sitar in front of me and I was blown away. I'm like, <laughs> I could not come out of it, you know. Mm. So that was, was your first memory, Matab. That was my first mem- memory of somebody playing live in front of me, and it was like, it was this transcendence, you know. It was, mm. uh, it blew me away. And, and con- now that I think it was completely unconscious, but I knew that this is going to stay, everything will come and go, but this oh, is it At now. that time, like that you, time. you were like... Yeah. And even later on, um, uh, we had uh, we were at somebody's house and uh, the guy used to play the sitar, but he didn't. And then they had some... Um, also, there was no YouTube, there was none of these things. So he put a CD over music and I was like, just glued into it, couldn't come out of it. So he came and went and uh, told my mom, is like, this kid, there's something unusual with you know? Say. Like it was, uh, it was like this was it, you know, like, couldn't think beyond it. Mm, mm. Yeah, it's... Uh, and, and when did you start it, like, like what was yeah, your so, first uh, instrument? Yeah, so um, I started with the sitar. And it's very interesting, um, my mom had brought us two um, suitcases, not suitcases, briefcases. He brought one for my uh, elder brother and he brought one for me. And uh, I'm like, you know, I'm a young boy, briefcase, kya karne? Mm-hmm. like, oh, do you need yeah, the briefcase, yeah. you need the bag. So I, I didn't use it. So once my mom's cousin was over and uh, my brother had the briefcase with him, it was like, nice briefcase, man. So I said, I got one, do you want it? <laughs> He's like, Achha. I'm like, it's brand new. <laughs> so then I sold it to him there. And like actually used actually it. Actually, I sold it, yeah. Sorry. And so I bought a uh, sitar that was you know, basic, very uh, cheap one. But like, did you went practice. on your own to the bazaar and just like... No, that, because I knew at home that I really wanted one. One day I was back from school and uh, I went for a nap. I woke up and there was this uh, whole show at home. Come, mom has gotten you something. So then Chit brought me a sitar with the money. Sorry. So that was my first sitar. And yeah, my second and third instrument, I would collect all the EDs, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, everybody, whoever wanted to give me some EDs, I'm like, just give me cash, don't buy me stuff, I need cash. (laughs) So then I collected all these things and then there was a workshop of this instrument uh, maker uh, around my uh, grandparents' house. So we went, we went there with my uncle and, you know, I'm like, I want this one and I don't want this one how much and uh, when he told me the price i had the money for one not for both and then my uncle explained to him how i actually saved so much money <laughs> the guy's like you take both wow <laughs> yeah so i still have those instruments and at that time like the the bachas around you like no, what no. were how uh, they were into pop music and you know yeah. like all the other stuff you know? but but and how how like what was the feedback you were getting uh, i didn't play it for anybody Sorry. you know even till probably around five, six years ago, people who knew me for 10 years, they didn't know I play instruments. Wow. Yeah. So and you were all in your room. Just, was just For me, it was like a path. It was like prayers, you know, it was going into a room silent wow. and sit for hours, light up a candle until the candle burns. I would just keep playing. And uh, there was an incident that brought me a little bit out of myself. And, uh, so somebody was over and I don't know how, what happened. And, and they ended up listening to me mm-hmm. playing the music. And I'd made a little cave where I had my instruments. It was dimmer lights, you know, set the zone, and <clears throat> I would do my usual practice. And uh, they sat there silently, and then they listened to it, and later on, uh, they're like, you look very, you're, you're very selfish. I'm like, that's the first <laughs> time somebody told me I'm selfish. I'm like, why? They're like, you know, this 
is, it, it, it really like hits you, but you've kept it only for yourself. Why aren't you sharing it? I never thought about it that way, you know, mm. that I have to share it. Uh, for you, it was not a profession. It, no, it wasn't. Yeah. And I still don't really want it to be a profession. Mm. Uh, it's always been for my own heart and uh, it always will be. But yeah, I think there's a little bit of uh, charity maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to share from whatever you learn. But but how, like how did you start learning? Because at that time, we well, just say you said that YouTube bhi nahi tha. Yeah. Koi teacher bhi probably shayad itna. No no no. Not, at, not at So all. like, did you just like start? There playing? was no online access. Um, uh, just mindlessly play, and oh. I didn't know how to tune it. I didn't have any teacher. I no lessons, just, nothing. Nothing, kuch, nothing, kuch bhi nahi. And um, yeah, the I just mindlessly kept playing and playing, and wherever you know, I would see a video, I would try to mimic what they were doing and then you know later on as my you know uh, listening abilities became better and when i my ears got more trained then i would be able to connect better Same. with you know and then i would be able to play more or less the same stuff uh, if i had a teacher uh, most likely i probably would be on a world stage by now the amount of practice and mm. the amount of playing mm. that i've done but um, from the other point of view if i had the teacher I, I might not have discovered myself so much because mm. um, I wasn't playing music I was you know like sitting and just um, contemplating it was mm. an instrument of contemplation it never was music and uh, <coughs> later on um, uh, I had a friend from Hunza who played the Rubab there's a whole community out there yeah right? yeah so yeah, yeah. Like and uh, so I uh, I'm left-handed so I said, man, I, I need a left hand robot. So then we ordered one for me, which was for left handed people. So I played with him a um, couple of uh, months. And after a couple of months, he didn't know anything to teach me. I'm like, who's better than you? He's like, uh, my Ustad is like a good master. He's in Honza, lives in Honza. So I said, you know what, next time you're going to Honza, I'm going with you. And um, yeah, I took, uh, I took off from school. And so this guy was going. We went. What, what was your age? Must have been probably 16, maybe. Wow. Uh, 16. So went to Hunza, and back then Hunza was Kacha Road, and you know, I'm still dreading those roads. I yeah. don't know how I made it there, you know. And um, went there, uh, this uh, man uh, in Hunza. Uh, these guys were talking, and you know, I'm sitting there, I'm doing this with my hands, I'm doing this, and that. He goes to the guy who took me there, who was his student, still a good player. He's like, one day you learn from this guy <laughs> instead <Wow>. of teaching. <laughs> you know? wow. And 20 years something on later, actually that Ustad also is like learning now from me. <laughs> wow. So I was really, um, so yeah, I stayed about a year there. Open, he, he had you stayed there? Yeah, yeah. I, stayed. I told the friend who took me there, I said, you go back because he had office to go to. So I'm staying back here. Yeah, but like you were in the school, the family. Yeah, I took off. I took off. Wow. <laughs> I was crazy about it. There was this Italian chap I met friends with uh, in Hunza. And. Uh, but what, what did you tell your like your mom and you know like? No questions, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Madness is a standard at home, you know. You follow you follow your calling. So no, 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 not at all. Yeah. So, like, you know. So yeah. you took a gap year. Basically. Yeah, yeah. I took a gap year and I. Probably some of my deepest reflections happened, you know, in those mountains. And you were 16, 17? Yeah, yeah, 16. Wow. Wake up every day, see the Raka Pushi go like, you know, orange and then yellow and then completely white sunset. Go open the shop. He had a bakery. So, uh, so that was that? Mithai, yeah, wow. So, would be there with him the whole day. And Rat go about 11, would close the shop and go home. And then they have these um, zikir mafils. Say. And so they get called pretty much, if not every day, then every other day. But it was like some su Sufi silsila, or yeah. is it like? Yeah, they, they actually, they follow the traditions of Nasr Khosru. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of their uh, um, literature is around Nasr Khosru. And they have a practice which is called Charaga Roshan. So they, um, um, light and uh, light on an oil lamp, and until the oil lamp burns, these guys just wow. play and they stuff, and then they go into zikr, 
That's people. what we see in the movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turkish, no, it's intense. Yeah, if, if, if you have not uh, gone on in spiritual journeys, so you would find people who would get, you know, convulsions and take them out of the room, party <laughs> lego, you know, wake them up. Wow. Yeah, some, some, and you know, it, it's intense, it's intense. And you were living with him as well? So I was living at this chap who take, uh, took me there, I was living at his cousin's place. Say, yeah. and you were not paying anything? Oh, no, they were, they were more than happy to Say. have me. No, no, you yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they actually loved it. And now yeah. even whenever I go there, you know, I'm like a family member. And Say. you know, they open these old albums, they see, look at you, <laughs> look wow. at you, yeah. That's so it's it was uh, it was immense and you know because normally you know if if you see like in Pakistan if you talk to any musician mm. ya koi bhi bachcha jab ho, so it's like the core is actually the music there is no like as such mm. connection of no 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 spirituality no, ya no. Phir, you know uh, mysticism as mm. well no for me music from the beginning it was I knew that I have I will find myself through this you know wow. I will uh, you know find who truly I am through this wow. and it's taken me to places <laughs> like, wow. yeah, it's um, but but what is your sort of so I, like I just want to start understand like how did you know matlab, like, I'm just like envisioning I'm just like visualizing like, you're eight years old you're, mm. you're ten years mm. old how did you know okay like this is something like you know so for, I, for normal it's just haan, bas, yaar, I'm like cool mm. mein lag raho, ye mein right, jaunga, right. Bas, like no no not at all like have you seen someone have you talked to someone or something happened like the any incident like you have no I think um, some of the it's not I d- probably did not choose music music chose me mm. it was the other way around you know it's like yeah. ye hai. <laughs> yeah. it was not uh, me deciding it it mm. was already decided from shuru say yeah yeah because yeah. uh, w- that kind of immense um love for something just yeah, cannot cannot you know uh, come just a passion yeah, yeah it's probably i mean society probably cannot bring that kind of uh, uh, passion for something it has to be inside mm. Mm. yeah it's um uh, yeah, it's uh, even now. If you tell me you can't play music anymore, I'm like, guys, I'm leaving the world. There's <laughs> mm-hmm. nothing to be there for. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and and usme bhi basically. So when you started like sort of uh, doing the music and you know playing and sara, so you sort of went into the whole uh, Persian music and the mm-hmm. whole like Sufi because that's yeah. like mostly the shams and the brazes yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know. Yeah. So the and journey, like, yeah. And but like so so it means like you were into the poetry as well because like if you were playing to yeah, so th- that's where the, my grandfather comes in now say you know like w- w- I always thought what is this guy doing you know mm. he, w- what's what's he after like he kya kar rahe? and and we had you know uh, the Rumi literature was like the household say. stuff there. And Hunza, man, this is all that we were doing, you know. Achha, so in Hunza as well, they were into the Rumi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. It's it's their the actual um, spiritual texts of the Hunzai tradition is Persian. Say yeah, it was only much later on that some Hunzai poets came, and even they also said the poetry in Persian. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it just got expanded and expanded and expanded, and then I picked up other instruments, and you know. And w- w- like, <coughs> when was the sort of the first time you uh, sort of started reading, you know, and uh, and what was the first sort of text? Like, was it like Shams or Ru- like you know? Uh, so with the music, with these music comes the songs, the the poetry. But um, you're reciting them as a young chap. You really don't know what you're reading, you know. Um, you know there is something, but was samaj nahi Whether you understand Persian or not. Uh, yeah, like you really quite don't, because they're talking about something yeah. inaudible, you know, um, it's something beyond words, mm. and, and mm. they're trying to bring it down to this reality. I read a um, text on uh, a rubab that was carved on the rubab. Say. Uh, back then when I was in Hunza. There was a carving on it, and it said, um, uh, dry strings, dry wood, and dry skin on the rubab. Uh, where does the friend so- friend's sound come from? And it got me thinking, I'm like, hey, w- w- what is this guy trying to say? And 
I started meditating on that, those lines. Like, where does the sound actually come from? And then as I played, you know, and went on and uh, did my usual practice, kept meditating on it. Where does the sound go? We know in physics, two objects, why yeah. <laughs> or hitting this one, you know. I'm like, that's not where the sound comes from. But where does that? So that where sound comes from is where reality actually comes from. So if you find out where the sound comes from, you understand where the whole existence comes from. Wow. You know, so it's a... <laughs> Wow, wow. Yeah, so uh, so so when you when you start like reading you know which is rubab uh, so that was a rubab or a that was a rubab rubab that was a rubab but so what was your so how did how did you basically then start it like what what was the first book or mo- more into the literature mm. side? because if you see like both of the worlds are yeah, like yeah. And it's not just music it's yes. not just literature like you come yes. and you know so following in the footsteps of my uh, grandfather remotely. Um, but, so I started. But was there any time like, just like that, na? Bachpan me ke wo bas ap samne baat hi aur wo apko recite karne hai, but then you were just like listening. Uh, not as much, not as much. But um, I started practicing the way my grandfather uh, uh, chose to practice um, from the very young age and wake up again, you know, meditate and so on. Um, so I was very much into all these prayers and. Uh, all of that uh, till the age of uh, probably I think maybe 16, 17, maybe less, six, yeah, 16 ish. And then I got really frustrated. I'm like, yeah, what is this? Like, I want to know it. I, you know, don't want to just pass by. And you know, that's it. And I like, I want to really know. I, I want it alive. I want, you yeah. know, to feel it. And yeah, so I completely flipped from that uh, uh, way of practice. And then I had a probably good um, long time, um, s- maybe six, seven years of being an agnostic. Mm. You know, like I went into like Bertrand Russell's and so know, so started where, where did that first. journey started, like how? Uh, so this is um, around when I was back from Hunza. So yeah. uh, when I was back from Hunza, and I'm like, yeah, Samaj nahi I want to actually find out, you know, ye kya? Like, what are they talking about? And then I thought it's philosophy, you know. So I mm-hmm. went towards philosophy and started reading. Like, uh, every, all these kids in school would be reading their, you know, like school books, novels, or whatever, um, re- you know, like reading Will Dorant and, you know, thick books on philosophy, Stephen Hawking's and whatnot. So uh, very much into philosophy. And... Um, I would, then after a while, I was more lost. I'm like, yeah, right. you know, like, <laughs> like this is not yeah. what I wanted to know. And then uh, I still remember I was uh, reading the last book on philosophy that I was reading was the autobiography of uh, Bertrand Russell. And you know, talking, and uh, he then he says, you know, he has had a good time being in this world, and if he was given the opportunity to come live it again, he would do it again. Like, I'm like, you know what, I am done with this stuff. I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the end of the chapter for philosophy. <laughs> and then as I went on, I realized this outside sources, they could point me to the direction, but there's no way anybody can tell me what I am looking for. And, and I knew it's all, I have to discover it inside myself. Yeah, so it it just gets crazier. You and know? and how so 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 those are the six ish sort of years. Yeah, yeah. So what was the first step of those sort of? So um, we're going uh, being with a single mom since the age of fourteen. You know, I've been working all along uh, to support the family and uh, like a normal sort of jobs. Yeah, we're like very like uh, you know basic jobs, and like done everything. Um, then, uh, so yeah, the, around probably 17, 18 years ago, <coughs> I got into the, you know, we had the sport background already and uh, mom was also into you know, human anatomy. Uh, so I got into the gym business, exercise business, and um, um, after a while that gave me the financial freedom to even pursue what I wanted even more. 
um, then all along these things were coming and this poetry and the mysticism that I was following it was just becoming more and more powerful over time but still I, the questions were not answered yet mm-hmm. you know the questions went on philosophy was done but now so daytime all I was doing was training people you know uh, and the first few years I you know tried to get better at my job and uh, study you know physiology nutrition anatomy training and all of that stuff but then it came a point where this thing was not letting me focus on anything I had to find out and so that's uh, in mornings I would be you know till like 8 p.m. I was uh, training people 8 p.m. nobody could hear from me anymore I would go to my little cave where the instruments were play for hours just meditate read stuff listen to stuff and uh, uh, try to make sense out of uh, what I was looking for. And um, it came to a point where uh, things uh, got really serious. Like yeah. I almost became like a psychopath. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like I would just stare into the mirror for hours and, you know, just say, like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, what, what is this whole thing? You know, we need to find answers. And... Um, just a lot of synchronicities start happening around me. And soon I realized that uh, there's a force that's trying to somehow direct me, mm. uh, you know. <clears throat> but what was that moment look, look, looks like? So when we were, when I was a very small uh, kid, uh, a family friend we had who was a poet, he um, was with my mother. And uh, he saw me, and he started laughing. Sorry. And then my mom is like, what happened? He's like, nothing. He's like, no, you've yeah. like, seen something. He's like, no, nothing. And then he's like, no, I'm insisting. Tell me what it is. He's like, even if I want to tell you, you wouldn't get it, now. But then she insisted, and he's like, um, you know, when he's in his late 20s, he's, he's going to reach something. You know, he's going to mm. touch a uh, very... Uh, uh, and touch a big point, like, you know. And that was, so, yeah, anyway, so this mm, journey of uh, self-discovery, I'm not sure if I should talk about the <laughs> psychedelic journeys at yeah. all or not. So let's talk a little bit about um, Molana Rome and, and Shams. Um, like, what do you think, so I was reading somewhere that in Iran, there are, like, festivals where mm. and these are, like, let's call it like a uh, not a Sufi festival but like a literature and you know like a mix mm. but if you see in Pakistan mm. yeah, generally mm. I think we haven't picked it up and whatever I get I send it to you and there are many definitions 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 and there are literal yeah, yeah. meaning and everything Nein. so what do you get out of like all of this like, do you, do you think uh, the whole sort of essence, like, did we sort of getting, forgetting day by day? Mm. But I feel like we didn't like, yeah. pick them up. Yes. Well, we haven't understood them um, very clearly. And people only see as much of Shams or as much as, uh, as much of Rumi as they have seen themselves. Mm. You know, like you can only know him uh, as much as you are and like other chaps did meet uh, Shams nothing happened uh, Rumi met him and he completely went insane yeah. you know like what what did he see and uh, he says um, uh, he when he was a very young chap um, he entered the gathering of the Sufis and he's like when they saw me he's like one of them started hitting himself with the shoe one of them started rolling on the floor and the sheikh was just staring at me. And then he's like, I go to them and say, somebody who has seen one limb of the elephant is one thing, the one who has seen the whole elephant is another. Mm-hmm. Like, you still haven't seen the whole elephant, you know? Yeah. So, um, well, you can't really expect um, people who live normal lives to uh, be really uh, able to understand um, what these people were all about. But it is very um, um, 
it's a huge event, the meeting of these two oceans yeah. in the spiritual world, especially in, uh, um, in societies that have a background and a tradition of mysticism, because these things don't happen too often. Mm. Mm. Uh, it's very much like uh, the meeting of, say, uh, Moses and Khazar, or the meeting of two very learned mm. men. One knows the, you know, Sharia and yeah. all of that stuff, and the other one is a master of the inner world. Um, so definitely, and there's always hijackers of religion. You know, mm, mm. Uh, a lot of people who want to cash on it. But, but you have you have read like the actual sort of scripts, yes. not like the translations. The yes. general story, ek ek, wo padne ko milti hai ki how did they both, you know, mulaqat hui. So what's the actual story? Because there are like three, four mm. versions. One is like he was in a madrasa or wo aaye aur unhe kitabe phenk di. But you know, एक ही है कि वो I think वो कुछ सर्मन कर रहे थे बैठे हुए थे वो उठ के वहाँ से चले गए। These are more refuted uh, events, but what is very much documented is that uh, Rumi is uh, walking um, through the streets in Konya, and there comes a man walks up to him and he says, "Who you who know it all?" who was greater the prophet who said glory unto you or by azid bastami who was a, a huge spiritual master and when he would get into his transpersonal altered states of consciousness he would say glory unto me for my greatness so the question he asked was who was greater the prophet who would say glory unto you or um, by azid who would say glory unto me and Rumi f- freezes. But what my understanding is, he does not freeze because he didn't have the answer. He did have the answer, he was a learned man. He had studied all these people and he had all the answers. Well, he, what he froze about was who's the guy. Mm. And Sham says it himself, he says, they sent me for him. And um, he had met him many years before this actual event. And he's like, you weren't ready for it yet. I had to wait. Say so that you get it so so it's not the first time they were meeting Vase, so he they had back. met maybe not really had a conversation or maybe sure. didn't you know but he had met him he had known Say. him you know he had been looking uh, he'd been looking out but he's like you weren't ready for it yet wow so he had to wait and come back when he's more mature and when he's exhausted his own mm. Uh, mm. resources because at that point Rumi was completely uh, unsatisfied he knew all, but he's still like, yeah, like mm. in, in his room, he, he's like, sh- I don't know anything. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, they sent him to uh, go and the rest is history is, is a very, and this is not in the spiritual, people who, are sp- who follow spiritual uh, mm. events, this is just not a normal. Uh, uh, Shams was told when he was a kid that, because uh, he was a very um, silent man, like he wouldn't talk too much. Um, um, he was told by one of his sheikhs that you will meet a man who will become your tongue and um, Rumi uh, uh, when he was a child when they were escaping the Mughal invasion (coughs) because his dad was a very well known scholar so wherever he would go he would meet the uh, spiritual teachers of the area you know pay respect and move on so when they reach Neshapur, uh, they meet Fariduddin Attar, and Fariduddin Attar is a huge, um, is a huge name in, in, in the spiritual community. And when Fariduddin Attar sees uh, them, he says, how is an ocean walking behind a river, wow. looking at the sun behind the dad? So he gives him one of his books, and he says, when you grow up, you study it, you know. Of course, he would understand as a young child. Um, and then he says that he will grow to burn the already cooked ones. Talking mm. about spiritual mm. people. Jo pake hai na, yeah. unko bhi jala dega. <laughs> and that meeting is uh, the, you know, it's a huge mm. Uh, mm. event in the, spiritual, uh, in the spiritual world. And Shams also says, he says, um, 
it's just like I was water boiling on myself, and it's like it hit Rumi, and it just you know mm. uh, started pouring like. Wow. So it's uh, it's yeah it's it's it, it it's very symbolic in many in many aspects. It um, you know the teacher um, student relationship. Um, uh, the fact that you have to completely surrender to the master that the master even if he's actually putting you through hard stuff he wants the good for you mm. is a proper uh, relationship of a what, but true what, what, what do you think is the the whole essence of all of this uh, like the, the whole like Sufism essence or like let, let's say um, Shams's sort of poetry or like whatever you know so what's the essence in the end love hmm. there's nothing else just love is uh, is celebration of life um, um, it is just whatever comes into words we cannot we cannot actually understand it with the words it's it's something to be um, it's something to be lived. Um, there are many paths. Mm. Some of them are dukan, and mm. some of them actually will actually get you there. Uh, there's not uh, one way or the other. But uh, these two stand out because Rumi was prolific. It's intense. Like you open up this stuff, and it's just mind-boggling. Uh, we do have so many others before him and they all are mm. and even Rumi himself is like and even Shams himself is like in Tabriz there are, you know hundreds of people greater than me like mm. he doesn't come out and say mm. uh, you know, I'm it all um, yet again uh, uh, when you know it, uh, you talk about the spiritual world it's it can be very different at mm. one time uh, he might say, I'm the greatest, there's yeah. nothing beyond me, but, you know, he would also. Mm. Mm. The essence of it, uh, this is it, truth, you know, find the truth for your own self. Uh, you know, like Rumi says, do not be satisfied with stories, F- unfold your own myth. Mm. You know, like, find out who you truly are. It's like a self-awareness. and a it's, a, it's a journey into the self. Mm. And these people are the guides uh, of the spiritual world and um, that's what Rumi says you know if you want to set out into the ocean don't ask those who never left the shore mm. you know he's like come to me uh, I'm an I'm a fortress invincible uh, he can take you from A to Z uh, guiding you throughout you know explaining you things he, and he hated poetry he was grown up as a scholar he didn't like poetry yeah. but you know He's like, but what other choice? How else can I actually communicate mm-hmm. what I have? Or Shams would say, you know, there's this thing inside me. I'm baffled how people are happy without it. You know? Uh, Which is your favorite poem? Uh, poem, there's so many. But can, uh, can you recite so like R- Rumi, Rumi is actually an explanation of Shams. Rumi, when you understand Rumi, you will find who Shams was. Mm. Uh, just so many, so many. This I can't pick one. Probably, I I can't pick one. They're all beautiful. But what stands out for me all the time is Shams. Mm-hmm. He's uh, he's a statements because they're very short, very precise. Um, they make things very simple. He um, contemporizes Islam. Mm-hmm. He brings it, mm-hmm. and the stuff that he um, uh, he says and the statements that he has left. Um, will always uh, make sense regardless of uh, the time or location that you are uh, born or living in. Yeah, one one of my I think uh, favorite people came in. I said, "Apne kamre mein bhi usko rakha hai." There is one uh, out uh, beyond ideas of mm. wrongdoing mm. and right doing. There is a field. There's a field. I'll, meet, I'll you meet you there. So the actual uh, the actual Persian words for wrongdoing and wrongdoing is actually kufro iman kufr and iman he says beyond kufr and iman mm. there is a space i'll meet you there so this was picked up by the goras yeah yeah the, the it's a, but 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 if you see like it's a it's a 
huge like translation gap you it's a very huge translation gap matlab yeah, the thing is the friend iman is something else right doing and wrong it's yeah you know and but it completely changes exactly. the pers- exactly. the the understanding of the poem um wrong doing and you know you can yeah, think yeah, about yeah, yeah. it as for anything you know like koi sahi or ghalat hai nahi but then you have kufr iman you know mm. Mm. So what he's trying to say is like beyond kufr and iman, yeah. we are in that space, mm. you know, mm. these, uh, breaking the shackles of, mm. you know. Abhi jaise ek aur aksar logon ne bolke status bhi lagaye hote hain. What you seek is seeking you. Itni zada uski wo. Yes. If if you read the. Well, that is less uh, likely to get um, deciphered wrongly, uh, mm. you know. Uh, and it's a journey of all of us. Uh, mm. um, Bayezid Bastami he says, you know, for thirty years, you know. I, prayed and you know was seeking him and then in the end i realized it was him seeking me not mm. and sham says he says i didn't choose the path the path chose me mm. you know so um but so whenever you're remembering god you're not remembering god you're being remembered mm. you know so is the other way so oh. what you seek is seeking yeah. you yeah it's it it can um it can be at many levels but uh, when it comes to rumi i think we should then see him in the light of spirituality mostly because um he probably doesn't have uh, too much to talk about mm. you know the material stuff he's a spiritual guide and most of the stuff um, should be taken in light of uh, uh, spirituality mm. we have a last request okay. so get thoda sa music agar aap play kar sake for okay. for 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 the team and for the audience okay um There's a lot that can be done, but in a short while. Sure, sure, like a quick, you know, thoda sa. Thank you. <laughs> again inshallah invite you for mm-hmm. uh, i was thinking to talk about like the whole uh, philosophy which you told me about health and fitness because <laughs> it's like another world when you go yeah, to the gym yeah i think gyms, uh, you know? i think you, you did there right because i was uh, um i was very um uh, confused uh, you know like what are we going to talk about you know yeah. but each of these is so vast it's just like uh, another it's yeah, completely yeah, yeah, different exactly, mindset exactly. and but we'll have these uh, settings often now okay. so we'll invite you again and again <laughs> okay. i'm telling you in advance you need to take <laughs> okay. some time out sure and but thank you so much for today sure. it was truly uh, an honor and you know yeah, there's sure. so much to learn from you every thank day. you so much for inviting thank you yeah, thank, thank you very okay. much okay <laughs>